we see that public education is an investment to make. And we need our government to start seeing it as an investment and not an expenditure and start reversing the cuts of the last 12 years. We will keep pushing for the end to overcrowded classes to get our kids the support that they need. The education of our children and our youth is critical. It's critical to our province and to our society and to our future. Again, thanking you for your dedication, your energy, and for the amazing work that you do every day in your classrooms, because that's what it's all about for us. That's who we are as classroom teachers. And I want to thank you for the strong support that you show your bargaining team, the strength, the commitment that you have, the resolve that you have on our picket lines. You now, working together, we will get that negotiated deal that we need, a fair deal at the bargaining table, a deal that includes better supports for our students. It's got to happen now, not later. We need smaller class sizes, class composition guarantees, and learning specialist levels comes this September for our children who are in schools now and for our future generations. Thank you for your support. Thank you. I am so incredibly thankful as a parent for you teachers taking a stand on this. Enough is enough. We need to put public education at the top of the priority list in this province. What do we value as a society? I value public education. And a part of that is valuing teachers. When I imagine teachers in their classrooms, overcrowded, I've heard, I've heard tell of some classrooms where there aren't enough chairs for kids. There aren't enough textbooks. They're sharing one sad dented trombone over in the music class if they're lucky enough to have music. There is no BC jobs plan without educated people. I scribe for a student because my educational assistant is sick and they sent no replacement because I care. But the problem is, is the BC Liberals do not value public education like we do. They are putting, they are putting politics before good public policy, before public education and it is shameful sisters and brothers. And let me be clear, make no mistake, the reason why this dispute is still on, why our kids are not in the school, is because Christy Clark and the BC Liberals have a purely political agenda before them and we need to stop them. We're not getting this done for teachers or for support staff, we are getting this done for the public education in this province and in this country. Sisters and brothers, together we will get this done. Premier Clark, stop hiding, get back to the bargaining table and get a fair deal for teachers in British Columbia. Thank you, sisters and brothers. I spend my recess speaking to a mentally ill mother who is worried about her son's progress because I care. I want to say to all my friends in the BCTF who are walking the picket lines day in and day out, this is not a fight just about you. This is a fight about the future of this country and about this province. This dispute was not caused by you. This dispute was caused by the underfunding of public education. And we as working people understand fundamentally if we don't fight to defend it, it will not exist for us in the future. This is a bigger fight across this country because we're hearing government time and time again telling us they don't have money. They don't have money for the most important things in our society. Yet they can find money to cut taxes for the corporations. Where is the money for the kids? Why can't we have assistance in the classroom to help kids that need, have special needs? It is so fundamental. If every Canadian has a constitutional right, then every kid has a constitutional right to a decent education. Yeah. 
This may be a strike by you, but fundamentally, there's no division in our labor movement in this province. Every union supports you. Every workers understand who send their kids to public education understand what you're fighting for. But more importantly, the solidarity that you're receiving from our field is vital and fundamental because what the Premier cannot do, they can never defeat you for the things that you're fighting for. It's for a better education for all our kids throughout this province. I have been here twice. And if I have to be here another 50 times to bring the solidarity on behalf of the Congress, I'll be here 50 times more again. So sisters and brother, stay strong, stay united, you will win. Thank you so much. Before school in the morning, I write letters to pediatricians about a student who literally cannot sit still for longer than 10 seconds and lashes out at others when frustrated because I care. In the hall, I have a private chat with a student who's had a bad weekend at home with dad because the counselor isn't there for two more days because I care. I speak on behalf of a majority of students in the public education system, Canada's future generations of voters. I spent 13 years in this system and I have seen the effects of the failure to reach a fair deal on pay, class sizes, and composition. Underfunding and pay cuts do not help us. Improving the communication between government, teachers, and students do. Somebody asked me when I was on my way out here, that's a long ways to go just to deliver one message. But I don't think they understand this, that an injustice to one of us is an injustice to all of us. Across the country, Every teacher, every educational worker for the last 12 years has been watching how you have been brutalized and underfunded, and it has been a crime. It's been a crime against public education. We are so proud of you, proud of how you stand up after government and government, proud of how you stand up and say, enough is enough. There are four teaching affiliates in Ontario. Between three and four of us, we have committed now, as of today, almost $1.5 million in donations. Because Christy Clark needs to know, you are not alone in this. to be as it is. We should be proud Canadians. You should be proud BC Tears. <laughs> you should be proud to be here and proud of public education. You should not have to continually trying to save it. Be proud of it. Watch it grow and we all win in this. Thank you. The only difference we need to see at the bargaining table is the government to show up. Imagine this, there may be a couple of little trust issues here at the table. Just a couple of little ones. Like maybe in 2002, they tore up the collective agreement and gutted the stuff that protected kids and teachers. And then maybe, maybe, they went to the bargaining table in 2005 and ordered you back to work, and we and you and the land movement stood together and forced them to come and bargain a collective agreement. And maybe in 2012, as the judge said, I love the judge, what's happening to me? The judge said they provoked the strike so they could order you back to work. Let's get this story straight. They were found guilty once, they were found guilty twice. They should go to the bargain table and fix it now and fix it forever. That's their job, back to work. They got charts, they got everything. Oh my God, we have no money. There's no money, the cupboard's bare. Why doesn't somebody ask the question, who took the shit out of the cupboard? Where did it all go? I know where it went, 
It went to the top of those towers, and it needs to come back from the top of those towers back in schools and hospitals and daycares across British Columbia. That's all we need to do. That's the price. The price is too high. I'll tell you, the price is too high. The price is too high to have an education system that doesn't give every single human being a decent chance. That's what this is about. I want to do, say to the others who are here tonight, to all of the other unions that have walked your picket line, to QP members, to the other people in the labor movement, you make us all proud to stand with us as we stand together. We know that if we're united, we can't be defeated. And that's my challenge to all of us today going forward. Christy Clark has a simple job to do in the next six hours. In the next six hours, she needs to pick up the phone and phone Jim Iker. She needs to say, Jim, we're getting a mediator, and I'm getting involved, and we're getting a deal in the next 24 hours or 48 hours. Because it can be done, sisters and brothers. Christy Clark, pick up the phone, and let's get going. That's what the people of British Columbia want. That's what... You have a mandate, That's what the, not from the top of those towers, but from every parent in this province, from every student in this province, from all of the citizenships, to make sure that next September our kids have a better place to go. So thank you all. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank teachers for standing proud. You make all of us proud to be working people. And thank you for what you do every day to make this province work. Hang together, stick together, solidarity forever, sisters and brothers. Let's stick together. Thank you.